saying amen, amen. And one of the ways that he's trying to uh, deceive us, uh, Tierra, is that he wants you to feel that you have no power. Yeah. I want to deal with, uh, uh, he's trying to take away your power. He's trying to take away uh, 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 your ability to do something because when we talk about power, it's the ability or the act or the capability of doing something or accomplishing something. Amen. It's, it's, it's sad to say that, that, that we can be a Christian, but we are powerless, but we should be powerful. And so how the enemy deceived you, he played a trick with you, think you are inadequate or think that you are, are not sufficient to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible speaks about if the gospel be hidden is hid to them who are lost in whom the God of this world have blinded their minds that they might not receive the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ who is the express image of God himself. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you or to trick you that you don't have no power. Tap a neighbor and say, I got some bounce back power. Come on, come on, say, I'm bouncing back after this. Oh, come on, come on, say, I got some bounce back power. Tell them. Mm, because in your power, the ingredients is your strength. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is thy strength. But if he deceive you or trick you that you have no power, then you don't have no strength to come back against adversities or challenges that will come your way. Uh, you got to know who you are in Christ Jesus. The Bible said nay in all these things that you are more than a conqueror. Do you know who you are? Don't I allow the enemy to trick you because it was the blood of Jesus that has saved you, that has redeemed you, that brought you back, and now you got power. Say, I got power. Amen, amen. You must say that I'm exercising my power or my authority over the enemy. There's time that we got to do some push-ups in the spirit. Uh, there's some time we got to do some sit-ups in the spirit. There's some times we got to do some jumping jack in the spirit uh, because the enemy want to trick you that you have no power, that you have no victory, that the authority don't belongs to you. What was the purpose of the cross if you don't have no power? And in the Bible it says in Acts 1 and 8 it said after you what? Receive the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you. Uh, he said after. Someone say after. after. There's something that happens in the after. After you confess Romans 10, 9 and 10, 10. This is basic Christianity 101. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, what do you do uh, when after you became a Christian now. Uh, is, it, is it more than just confession? Yes, it is. Uh, it's time for you to have some power that you'll be able to convert someone, but he's been playing trick or treat with you when you feel like you ain't got no power. He said, after your conversion, that's why he told Peter, he said, Peter, I want you to be very careful because I need you to do something, Shanisa. He said, Satan desired to sift you as wheat, but I pray for you, Peter, that your faith fail you not, and so you can strengthen and convert your brother. You ain't got no power when you're still living in gloom and doom and you feel like you can't make it. It's time for the power to be released upon the church. That's why people don't come to church because they don't see no power in the church. Then we got to be representation of God's glory. That I'm a glory carrier of God. I'm a written epistle read of men. And so when people see you, it should demonstrate some power of God. We are extension of God. Ambassadors of Jesus Christ. I'm heirs of God and joint heirs of Jesus Christ. I've been adopted into God's royal family. And so since I've been adopted in, I got some inheritance, and that's the power of God. I want some power, Christians in the church. You're powerless. Uh, having the form, the form that's powerless, a form. You come to church, uh, you work on an auxiliary, that's a form. Coming to church don't that, that don't shake the devil, but what shake the devil is some power. That when I speak, demons tremble. When I speak, sickness got to go. I'm talking about that power. That you can lay hands on yourself and get healed. Power, power, power. The devil has been playing 
didn't trick or treat with you, but the blood of Jesus covered that. Say the blood of Jesus covered that. Now, 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 now we talk, Luke said in 1019, dealing with exercising your authority. You got to practice this each and every day. He said, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, 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 nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Uh, so why are you so fearful? Uh, why are you so afraid? Uh, why you can't go further in life or go further in ministry because you're powerless? Uh, but he said, I created you to be powerful. If I created you after my own image and after my own likeness, I even told you in the book of Genesis that you should have dominion, that sound like power, dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over everything on the earth and everything that creeping upon the face of the earth. That's power! In the book of Genesis it was power. And so what are you doing? Are, are you like the Galilean? Are you just gazing? Uh, why you sit here gazing? Uh, why are you? He's already ascended. Uh, and so he said, I won't leave you comfortless. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's the power of God. I'm not talking about whole shit. That don't impress me. The devil can speak in tongue. Uh, I'm talking about power where it's demonstrating your character, in your lifestyle, and what you do outside of church. Uh, is getting quiet on that number. What do you do outside of the church? Uh, is there any power demonstrated in your home? Is there any power demonstrated on your job? Is there any power demonstrated in your community? I'm talking about that power. I'm not talking about the form of godliness. I'm talking about the real, authentic, raw power of God. And people see you and they say, can you pray for me? Or do they run from you because you gossip too much? Being quiet in here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's deal with this power because I got to exercise my power uh, because the enemy is coming after me. Uh, the enemy is coming after you. Uh, after you confess that you are a born again Christian, uh, he's coming after you. You are on his hit list. Uh, and so you got to be careful uh, that you do more than just come to church, but you got to have some power on the inside. Uh, that's why people backslide. Uh, ain't no holy goes feel power. That's why Pastor Hazel Douglas told me years ago that's why they backslide Brother Blair. They ain't got no power. It's the keeping power of God that would keep you in all peace. It's the keeping power of God that you are able to help your brother and sister exercise the power. Listen here. 2 Timothy 3.17 Let's go there in your Bibles. The praise team was singing prophetically. It wasn't no set song. We had a meeting early in the week, and the Lord spoke to me and said, let the praise team flow prophetically. Don't have no song, but let them sing. Let's give them a, pra a hand praise. Awesome job, praise team. Come on. Amen. They, they created their own song. The Bible said a uh, new song, and that's what they did. They demonstrated a new song. It was prophetic. Amen. Let's give it them up for another hand praise. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.17 Yeah, yeah, yeah It says this That the man of God may be what? Perfect. Keep reading Thoroughly furnished to all good works Thoroughly furnished to all good works that mean complete. Uh -huh. uh, the uh, the uh, Amplified says, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, uh -huh. well fitted, uh, fit like a nice suit on you, uh -huh. well fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Uh, you need some of this power, but you got to work the power of God. You got to exercise your authority. Uh, you got to begin to get in your word and you got to begin to pray like never before because I want you to understand after after we begin begin a born again, there's a power that God want us to release unto you. Say there's a power he want to release to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 let's, let's go to Luke 24 and 49. It's talking about remain here until you are clothed with power. I want to wear power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's deal with Luke 24, 49. Yeah. 
listen to this. I read it from two versions. He said, and behold, I send, help me read, the what? The promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Amen. Amen. Say, stay here. Stay, stay in your prayer closet. Yes. Stop moving everywhere. Yes. Uh, uh, stay here until something happens. Yes. We talking about praying until something happens. Uh -huh. Can you stay in one place for a little while until something happens? Uh -huh. It says this in this version. Uh, he said, but but remain here until you are clothed with power. That's good. Until, until you are fully clothed with yes. power. I ain't talking about just a little t-shirt on. I'm talking about fully clothed yes. in the spiritual yes. realm of God. Yes. And so when we're talking about that the devil been trying uh, to trick you. Uh, he's trying to trick you and to say you ain't got no power. Yeah. And so you got to understand that you got to stay in one position and stop moving all the time. Yeah. Uh, get in a yeah. consistent yeah. prayer uh, yeah. closet and begin to pray without season. I'm talking about how is power demonstrated. It's demonstrated through your lifestyle. It's demonstrated how often do you pray. Little prayer, no power. More prayer, more power. How bad do you want yeah. it? Uh, do you really want this power? I'm talking about a power from God. Uh, I ain't talking about what you see on our Saturday or Sunday yeah. church service. Uh, I'm talking about power demonstrated. Uh, where well, you got to fight the devil in the trenches in yeah. the midnight hour uh, and he's attacking your mind and, and you about to lose it. Uh, but you said nay in all these things. Uh, I'm more than a conqueror. Uh, for I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I'm talking about that type of power when the enemy come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. I'm talking about that kind of power. We have that kind of power that when the enemy has got you like a vice group and he's squeezing you, but you say, devil, you are a defeated foe and the blood of Jesus cover me. Talking about the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus cover your mind. The blood of Jesus cover your children. The blood of Jesus cover your finances. The blood of Jesus cover your unsaved love. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, do anybody want to prophesy the blood? Uh, prophesy the blood. Say the blood over my money. The blood over my children. The blood, the blood, the blood over my crazy mind. I got to need the blood uh, because it's the blood of Jesus that gives me power. It's the blood of Jesus that set me free. It's the blood of Jesus that I have the power to bounce back from every adversity, from every challenge that come in your life. The blood, the blood, the blood. Yes, it does. I'm talking about that kind of power that we need. That the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Someone say the blood. blood. Ephesians 1 and 7.